It, I think it was born out of a <coughs> sort of personal crisis in, in terms <coughs> both of like my life, my particular life, but, all, but more um, a crisis in terms of, um, of uh, feeling uneasy with the, with the reality or with the narrative of, uh, of our times and my way to try to answer this uneasiness, again both personal and more social or sociopolitical, was um, to try to, to write this novel, to, to try and answer what happens when somebody is, um, I don't know if I'm going to say this right in English, but um, divided um, between his mind and his body. Like th that's the main idea, that, that this is what happens to the, to the main character. And, um, and yeah, the novel for me was uh, to try and explain to myself uh, what would happen in this, in this case. And the title um, means that um, it, it has to do, as I was saying, with the, with the narrative of the times in the sense that we live under a narrative that is um, egalitarian, uh, inclusive, democratic and blah, 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 but you just have to go out to the street or read a newspaper to, to realize that, that this is not the case and there is like a huge uh, mass of people that are formally in the system but that really count for, for nothing even if they can vote, uh, like as a, the ultimate contemporary political act, so uh, this would be like the, the sum of the zeros that um, exist only in a formal way but in every real way are completely excluded from, from the system. I think that in a sense it's, um, I think it's both a very Mexican and non-Mexican book. I think it's very Mexican in the sense that most, m many of the realities described there have come from things that you can see as part of uh, of everyday life, and, and in fact, it's been curious because I learned, like, through some people from from Spain, for example, that that read the book. I realized that it was harsher than I than I had thought. Like, maybe some of the things that are in there are described as as part of everyday life, and then you see the reaction of people uh, living in other countries, and um, and uh, and you realize that um, that it's specific to Mexico and not necessarily something that goes on in in, in other places. But at the same time, <clears throat> I think that um, what would be like the main point of the book is um, uh, a narrative that applies more or less at least to the whole Western world. So in that sense, I don't think that it's specifically Mexican. I think that the Mexican, um, uh, I don't know how you say it, the Mexican um, application of this, of this narrative is particularly brutal, but I think that um, is more or less what you're seeing in the US, in the UK, even in Spain, Italy, Portugal, Greece, whatever. So uh, I didn't, I wasn't trying to, 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 to preach anything or to, to say like, uh, to denounce anything. It was just like, again, trying to, to, to describe or to express an, an uneasiness with um, something that I think is going on pretty much in the whole Western world. <coughs> I, I, I think that it has a lot to do with the Mexican society in ways that uh, Mexican society is one of the most unequal societies, at least of the what so-called Western world. I don't know. You should actually be taken into account as part of the Western world. But for instance, uh, if you look at the national identity, even the the symbol of the national flag comes from a symbol. Uh, of a pre-Hispanic um, civilization, the Aztec civilization. And many names of the cities all around the country come from the ancient names of, uh, of the cities of pre-Hispanic uh, pre civilizations. Nevertheless, the indigenous people suffer from immense amount of, uh, of illiteracy rates, for instance, of poverty. There's a lot of racism in the country. So the whole notion of progress has to do with a very, very narrow and specific part of the, of the society. The wealth is concentrated, uh, really, really heavily concentrated, as in many other parts of the Western world, but in Mexico you can see that very harshly, concentrated in very few hands. Uh, Mexico is like something like the 13th of, of something economy in the world, but over half of the population lives in extreme poverty conditions. And the, um, the system of the, uh, the, the, the socio-economical project in Mexico uh, continues to thrive towards a direction that it's uh, 
uh, making this gap bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And, and you see this, for instance, we just had now an elect electoral process in the country, and you see precisely that it's only during this election and electoral period that uh, the, 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 the political speech uh, tries to address, at least in, 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 a, in a simulation, uh, the, the, the population as a whole, uh, because uh, on the everyday life, you see that the policies, the policy making, and the the, 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 the political uh, dynamics uh, concern only a very, very, very small part of the population. So in that way, I think it is actually um, uh, Eduardo's book. I think it's very Mexican, but also, as he mentioned, sadly representative of of many other countries in the world.